So I received this question uh, via YouTube and it reads, does it make sense to use a clipper or limiter in Dolby Atmos or ask differently, what loudness level, LUFS, do you finish the Dolby Atmos mix? Now a Dolby Atmos mix must, um, must not exceed minus 18 LUFS, which is brilliant. I love the fact that the ceiling is minus 18 LUFS and that is it. Can't go louder. You can't go louder. That's, um, that is a integrated LUFS. So we can't go louder than that. Uh, we can obviously go quieter, but we can't go louder. What this means is we get a lovely dynamic range and it, it, it destroys that loudness war. Like if you guys want in stereo want to go and fight in the loudness war, by all means do. But in Dolby Atmos, we've kind of reset this loudness war, which is amazing. And we love that. So minus 18 is basically the new ceiling. Um, and it, it, it really does make a huge difference. But to answer your question, in regards to clipping, um, you can, I mean, I use, I use this, which is the Hornet, Hornet Samp, I think it's called. Um, and it's basically what it is, is you've got a compressor, a clipper and an EQ in there. And what, what it's basically doing is, unlike stereo, you've got, stereo, you've got two channels. You've got left and you've got right. And you can add a limiter, compressor, EQ there. <clears throat> Everything's summed to those two channels. Dolby Atmos is, is different. You've got multiple channels, 128 channels that all need to be compressed, EQ'd simultaneously. Now, the problem you've got is you put an EQ on one channel, you adjust that, you've got to then duplicate that onto every other channel for it to make to take effect. <clears throat> so, a plugin like this, <coughs> what it does is it basically uh, has every every channel in your mix on this 128 um, kind of routing section. Any changes that you make to one EQ, for instance, you make a change on this EQ, it does it to all of them. So every single, all 128 channels have this EQ applied to it. Same with the compression. And what I will say is <clears throat> there is a big difference between using the compressor and not using the compressor. There is a big difference. Now, a clipper, I'm not keen in terms of a clipper. I don't use the clipper. I'm, I'm happy to use subtle, soft compression, but I would never clip. And I don't, I don't agree with, with the clipping aspect of it. Um, because music in Dolby Atmos, it kind of works a little bit different and it sounds better not clipped. Um, it's not like how you would work with, with stereo and you would, you would brick wall limit. It sounds better with dynamics. So we try, I try not to, <coughs> I try not to add any clipping. Uh, I don't add a clipper. I do add subtle compression and this is the best way to do it. Now, until Dolby decide to build it into dams, which I think they will do one day because it just makes total sense to have this kind of, um, uh, like they've got it already in terms of this, um, this here, which is the binaural settings. Um, and you can change whatever you change on here, shoots it down the line to dams and, um, it, it, it basically, whatever you do there goes over there. It's possible to do, and I don't know why they haven't done it yet, because it just makes sense to have a, a kind of master EQ, a master compressor that goes into the Dolby Atmos software um, for when you do your final prints. So we haven't got to use these other tools within Pro Tools. We have a master bus technically 
on the master bus. Now the master bus, when you think of a master bus, it's not on this computer over here. We have the master bus. The master bus is basically DAMS, which is Dolby Atmos um, software. Um, so uh, in Dolby Atmos Master Suite, what would be ideal is if there was a compressor, there was an EQ, there was a clipper, and there was all these tools that could be used within uh, within the Dolby Atmos Master Suite. Um, for now, though, we haven't got that. Um, we we use this, and, and it works great. And we do we can apply EQ, we can apply compression, we can apply clipping. But like I say, I don't like to use clipping because I, I prefer a more dynamic. Um, approach to Dolby Atmos but ultimately we have to we have to have audio peaking at minus 18 LUFS it's not like you can just get a clipper and just go right minus 18 LUFS bosh stick that there drive everything into it that's not that's not going to achieve a great sound because of the way Dolby Atmos works is is different to how you would drive into a into a limiter in stereo <clears throat> But, um, yeah, to basically kind of ask, answer your question, um, yeah, minus 18 is the new ceiling. That's that's your peak. We don't go any higher than minus 18. Uh, we try not to go any lower. What I aim for is minus 19 to minus 18. Anywhere in between that, perfect. 18.5 um, is where I like to sit just because um, if I'm minus 18.5, I'm kind of halfway between and um, I can allow for some fluctuation in different software, whether it, it reads it differently. <coughs> um, yeah, so there we go. I hope that answers your question. But minus 18 is the ceiling. That's where we, we go to. And clipping, there are, I know of one, which is this plugin, um, that I can apply EQ, compression, over a mix bus, master bus, um, it's, it does it very well, um, but more tools like this need to come out for Dolby Atmos, because it is very powerful, and it's, it is the only way to technically process and work with a, uh, a master bus, because master bus, you need to think of a master bus as very, very differently to a master bus in the stereo world. It needs to be thought of very different. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Let's go to the next one.